I used to have to tell Sarah not to climb him like a tree. I said, he's not a tree, he's your uncle. But now she calls me a rich tree. Yeah. <laughs> you want to do lions? Yeah, let's be lions. That's mm. it to everyone you know. OK. <laughs> He's my baby. I mean, you know, he's six foot five, or whatever, but he's my baby. And he was in harm's way. And it's a hard thing to deal with. Breaking news story to tell you about. Apparently, a plane has just crashed into the World Trade Center here in New York City. It happened on, just, just a few hit. moments ago. Right? Oh, my God. Another plane has just hit. It hit we were all in school thinking that a bully is your biggest fear. And then all of a sudden, we're watching these towers fall and all these people die. I think we all grew up faster than most people. I was just like, I want to be the first person overseas fighting in this war. And I figured if I joined the Marine Corps infantry, I'd be the first one going over. He came home and he goes, I'm going to join the Marines. And I'm like, you're 15. He goes, I know, but when I, he goes, so you're lucky I'm not 18 because I go today. My fellow citizens, at this hour, American and coalition forces are in the early stages of military operations to disarm Iraq, to free its people, and to defend the world from grave danger. So I signed up for the Marine Corps in 2003. I got selected as a special tester, and a lot of this was like psychological tests, all these different things, and every time we went back to one of these, there's fewer and fewer people. We finished with about 20 people, and that's actually when they told us, you're gonna to go to Camp David and guard the President of the United States. Just the thought of me being in charge of the life of the President of the United States, coming from a town of 1,100 people, to me that was a crazy idea that this would even happen. But my heart was telling me to go to war, so I told them that I would love to, to go to the first unit deploying overseas. Oh, there's me. Oh, I'm right next to Maeve. Hey. See that reflection. Oh yeah, there's Jepson and all his big gun. It's cold. It is cold. <laughs> Luke Jepson was my gunner while I was in Iraq. And we kind of had this big brother, little brother thing going because I was in charge of him, but he was older than all the other guys. This is Iraq. I hate it. And I'm going to be coming back. Uh, Corporal Casper is inside searching the house. You can see his head right there. He's the one that's way taller than everybody else within 30 miles. Looks like he wants me to turn it off, but I think he just doesn't want to show off his uh, big muscles or his pretty face. So we're gonna keep uh, we're gonna you keep done? filming him. You cut it. Down. You cut it. No. You have to. We came up on this bomb right in the middle of the road, so ultimately we knew it was fake. What I didn't know was we were at the ambush stages. Um, uh, yeah, that's 90. Oh, I'm really bad at sniper, so I'm gonna go ahead and get back in. Here's me getting in. His feet are right next to me in the truck because he's sticking out of the gun. I made him get in the truck. All of a sudden, his feet scoot back up. And then I noticed there's cars coming, and he starts waving again, and I said, Gibson, you want to end up on my arm, don't you? And he's like, it'd be an honor to be on your arm, Cobra Casper. Not even 10 or 15 minutes after that, he was, he was shot and killed.
So needless to say, um, I ended up putting him on my arm. But <sighs> we didn't know where the shot came from, so we never actually got the sniper. I never really saw the enemy out there, and I was just getting hit left and right. He was really depressed for a while. I mean, he was really bad. He was always so happy, and everyone in town knew him, loved him, always holler at him, smile when they seen him. That's just his personality, just what everyone did. So when he got dark like that, it was, it was pretty upsetting. He's changed a lot. I mean, he's still funny or tries to be funny and stuff like that, but you can tell that something's missing. Nobody else around you can relate. I was going to college with these 18 and 19 year old kids who had no life experience. And I'm 22, but I already have a brain injury. I've lost my best friend. I went to war. I was in a relationship at the time that ended up ultimately failing because I was a different person when I came home. I didn't want them to know that I was hit by these unseen people all the time, so now I'm afraid that someone's gonna blow us up here. The VA hospital diagnosed me with PTSD, left mild traumatic brain injury, tinnitus, back problems, degenerative disc disease, and uh, migraines. The first class I signed up for at Heartland Community College was business. I forgot what the assignments were. I forgot how to log on to the system to look at the assignments. And I ended up failing that class. There he is. Yo! <laughs> What's up? How are you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah, yeah it's good to see, good you. see you. The memories. Yeah. Those were good days. Yeah, I remember I was here because I didn't like other people to see my work sometimes. Because I had my I had my uh, little easel here and I was coloring in that photo of Luke. I need to send you that photo. I forgot. I need, I'm going to watch it. I still had this urge to tell my story, but I still didn't know how to verbally speak it. You're like, hey, instead of doing, you know, the grass green, how about you do it a color that doesn't make sense? But it makes sense to the way you felt. So I just went with it and I did everything just red. Immediately, from all over the room, it was like, you put red in there because you saw him die. You had red in there because you were so passionate about him or red because you were so angry that he died. And all these made sense to me. I almost felt like I found, I found a way to talk about it without talking about it. I dove in to art because I felt like it, it was healing me at that moment. I wanted to explain to you what losing that innocence from war feels like. I want you to know what it feels like to be blown up.
At first, I needed a voice. When I got to having that voice through art, then I needed a purpose for that voice. Chris. Hey, how's it hey. going? Good, good. Uh, I do these calls like the night before, but I would love to hear kind of what you have to say because most likely I dealt with the same thing or I'm still going through it. So Yeah, I'm super stoked. And I wouldn't be flying nowhere and not knowing. It's like, all right, there's a marine on the other side. I'll be okay. <laughs> yeah. I knew Chris was a country music fan because on his application when he filled it out, he talked about it. And I was like, what I want to do is I want to be able to set you up with some of these songwriters that have written some of your favorite songs. And uh, I would love to fly you out to Nashville and help you experience telling your own story with these guys. Delta, yeah, American's way down there. This is all super sick. What up, brother? Oh, man. You made it. All right, we ready for some adventure? I've never <laughs> met this guy before. I've just talked to him on the phone. Move that up in here. And I just scan his arm because he has tattoos all over his arm, and the scripture pops out. It's John 15, 13. Right, John 15, 13. Look at it. Boom. And then I'm like, dude, I was like, I have the same tattoo. You have got to be kidding me. <laughs> dude, that's crazy. John 15, 13 means no greater love has a man than to lay down his life for a friend. This is awesome. This little gate too. What? Oh, there's Brandon. Brandon and Jacob. How, How are you doing? doing? Man? Brandon Kenny. I'm Chris. Good to meet you, Chris. Good to meet you. Thanks for your service, man. Oh, thank you. Thank I really you. appreciate it. Look Yo. forward to this. Yeah, I'm stoked. I joined the Navy uh, 18 days after I graduated high school. First appointment was on the Kuwait Iraq border. So I would take patients into the ER. You found out how many patients were inbound, what their status was. So we got a call, our Ridgeway standby for traffic. We had a Marine come in. His survival rate is probably about 40%. And so we consciously had to make the decision that, uh, that we're going to let him go. And <laughs> because we didn't strip him down before he came in, I had his dog tags in my hands when they said, we're going to let him go. So I, I, I got out, I came back home. I, uh, I knew I had problems because I wanted to kill myself. I, I, got his, I got his name tattooed on my wrist, so that I might as well get it tattooed. This is something that's going to be with me for life. And when I was at Doug's grave, I, I remember breaking down crying. And, <laughs> and then within like 10 seconds, just something, it felt like something was just grabbing me. And I just started laughing. And, and I think that's when I talked to Paul, Doug's brother. And he was like, my brother wouldn't want you to be crying over his past. Like, if anything, he would grab a Corona and he would sit down. And he would just be like, and I guess, I mean, that's, I mean, that's what I deal with. Why did he pass? He had a wife who was a Marine. My wife left me. She thought the PTSD would never get better. Why do, why do I get to survive? Why do I, you know, why is that? You know, so yeah, that's my story. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Thank you for sharing that, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. I can't even imagine. I can't either. I had this need to tell a story about Luke. I wrote the song in the perspective of him telling me not to kill myself. Because any time I'm feeling down, I listen to that and I'm like, you know what, you're right. It's almost like he's telling me now. I put the words in his mouth, but he's telling me. To drop this weight off my shoulders over a couple of Coronas, you know. <laughs> That's cool. What if you did like all Ridgeways, I'm inbound? For us, it was always all Ridgeways, standby for traffic. 
Oh, yeah. So if it was him saying all Ridgeways, oh, wow. I'm inbound. Yeah. And like from that, that moment? From that perspective of him being inbound. And then it's almost like a, when we have Coronas, then you'll know. All Ridgeways, I'm inbound. Um, you know, these four wheels are, are, you know, coming fast. Like, so set the table, do, 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 do all this. Maybe you do a different melody type thing. All Ridgeways, I'm inbound. These four wheels, you know what I'm saying? You know, I don't know. The hound rhyme. Mm -hmm. So set the table, do all the Yeah. Mm -hmm. da, 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 da. All Ridgeways, I'm inbound. Maybe you bookend it like that. Mm hmm. Okay. That's Keep, keep, keep. I'll keep the Coronas cold. Yeah, that's better, more manly or something. I don't, know. I don't think you have to rush <laughs> Coronas. Just remember that. You don't have to say Coronas cold. Uh, keep the Coronas cold. Yeah. Keep the mimosas cold. <laughs> <laughs> you get a special treat here tonight. Um, please give a warm welcome to Mr. Jacob Powell. You know, as a songwriter, you're always looking for something that's, that's real to write. And it doesn't get, it doesn't get any realer than, than writing with a veteran. All ridgeways I'm inbound These four wheels are hardly touching the ground so open the gate, set the table, say a prayer if you're able to, and we'll fight this thing right down to my last breath. So do what you can, but if the man upstairs is calling me, you make the call to my brother Paul, he'll biggest mix of emotions hearing the songwriters talking about the darkest time that I I don't talk about I didn't know you you're so happy that finally this negative experience may have some positive um, but at the same time you're, you're you're crying but you're smiling um, I, it's just overwhelming. Yeah, I'll keep the coronas cool. Chris, thank you, man. Richard, thank y'all. Thank y'all for having me. I appreciate Let's give it up it. for Jacob and Mr. Chris. Thank you, Chris. Thank you for your service. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I can't believe you did that. The vulnerability of telling your story is what helps you get you over that hump because you don't have to like keep this all in. You could put it into a song or put it into a piece of art. You don't feel weak. You feel like you accomplished something, you created something, and you're willing to put it out there in public so that people could react to that. Chris Gunner, he was uh, the last veteran to come through our songwriting program. George W. Bush started painting 
veterans who were injured in war. It just kind of pulled at my heartstrings because it was an actual conceptual piece of art dealing with something that he was going through with, to kind of highlight them being injured in a war that he was a president of. So you probably don't know, but most of Camp David is staffed by United States Marines. Richard Casper was serving there. After his tour at Camp David, he volunteered to go to Iraq. He suffered four IED injuries and came back with TBI, traumatic brain injury. He overcame the stigma of being a tough guy Marine, and he took up art. He went to the Chicago Art Institute, which for those of you who aren't artists, is really good. <laughs> and he has started a program called Creative Vets to help uh, provide art therapy to the vets. And so, uh, Richard, we're thrilled you're here with your fiance, Ashley. Thank you for coming. You might stand up so people can look at you. Richard, how are you, big guy? Great. Good how to see you, you again. Yep, you too. Yeah, how you doing? I'm doing great. I'm I doing hope so. great. Everything led me back here, so it's been, it's been awesome. Camp David was wonderful. It's one of the great treats to be president, mainly because people such as yourself made it so comfortable for me and my family. Well, thank and, you. Uh, yeah, mighty Marine Corps. Yeah. <laughs> I it noticed was... you got a little Marine art on your arm. Well, I got this. This. No greater love has a man lay down his life for a That's friend. That's what I'm talking about. And then this was Luke Yepsen. He was actually from Kingwood, Texas. Yeah. Um, and he was shot and killed beside me in Iraq. And he's the reason I kind of started everything I did is because I, I needed to express what I went through. I have a piece of art here, which is one Let's of my very first. Let's go sit down and look at it. That's strong. It's just a chalk pastel, so you'll still yeah, get very some nice. on here. Yeah. It was still at the time where I was almost like wanted to end my life. I didn't know what was wrong with me. I couldn't deal with my brain injury, my PTSD, anything like that. We've dropped the D. Oh yeah, PTS. Yeah, you know it's why? It's not a disorder. Yeah, it's not a disorder. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's an injury that can be healed, yep. and you're living through exactly. it. Exactly, yeah. Guys such as yourself got a PhD in life. You might have gone to the Art Institute, and that's good, but you got a PhD in life personal responsibility, discipline, worrying about somebody else. And uh, you're going to be one of the really uh, important assets to the future of this country. Well, thank and you. And that's why it's important. Knowing you as a person, I feel like a sense of not survival guilt in a way, but just like, like I want these guys to live. And I, and I poured my soul into the thing because I, I admire our vets so much. You know, I really do. It's a remarkable group of citizens. And uh, to the extent that we can help, we need to in society. So like you, I'm going to spend the rest of my life helping our vets. That's awesome. Thank you so much. I'm glad you're here. Walking through the garden where all of my pieces are is, it's a little bit surreal. With my brain injury, sometimes I forget I created pieces or I forget why I created pieces. And I get to walk through there and kind of discover them. We all wore the same helmet, but we all react to it differently when we come home. So in my work, I have a lot of helmets. It's the one thing we struggled with. We were next to you, but we didn't want you to know what we are going through. I wanted them to go on their own little deployment for the winter time. And so now I have this jungle of my pieces out there surviving, just like I'm trying to survive. <laughs> 